Hi guys, my name is Vanessa, and today we are at Bivouac Cidery with Lara, and we are going to learn a little bit about how they got started. Laura, can you tell us who you are, the role you play here, a little bit about yourself? Sure. Hi, good morning. Um, I'm Lara. I'm a co-founder and owner here at Bivouac Cider Works. Um, we've been open for about four years. We're right here in the heart of North Park in San Diego. Um, and we make craft cider for the active adventurer. Um, so all of our cider is made right here on, on site. And we start with either an apple base or a pear base, and then we make a whole bunch of really fun flavors. Can you tell us a little bit about the name, like the meaning of your cidery? Like, what did you guys come up with it? So the word bivouac, I would say, the first question everybody asks is, how do you pronounce it? How do you pronounce it? it? Bivouac. That was my question. Yeah. <laughs> and the second question everybody asks is, what does it mean? It, it, the name means temporary camp. Um, so we've got a whole outdoor action adventure vibe. Um, everything about our branding um, is all camping and climbing and hiking and outdoor action adventure. Um, so here in the tap room, all this rope in here is climbing rope. And the brass inlay on the bar is a topography map of a beach here in San Diego. And um, we've got stars on the wall, that's the actual night sky. And we've just incorporated a lot of outdoorsy elements into the brand. Um, and I think that cider lends itself to kind of nature and being an, a natural product and coming from the earth. And so um, that was really meaningful to us. So out of everything you could have done, right? Like we've said, beer, cider, there's a, seltzer, there's lemonade, there's you know, all these different adventures, even just baking and cooking and all these other industries that you could have gone into. Why did you choose cider? I think cider is a really unique and amazing beverage that is also underappreciated and is kind of an under-highlighted. Um, and uh, I guess I, I like an underdog. But I think it's unique because it comes from the earth. It's real fruit, real fruit juice, and it, you know, yeast comes from the earth and fruit comes from the earth and combine them and, and you have this amazing, delicious, fun beverage. I think that's really cool. Um, so I, I was always kind of attracted to that you know, wine or cider or things made from fruit. I, I lived for a time in Australia and England and they have a really long cider culture and I think it's uh, kind of normal to go down to the pub and sometimes you have a beer and sometimes you have a cider. And in Southern California, people are really looking for that a little bit healthier lifestyle. And a lot of people are looking for something gluten-free and cider is naturally gluten-free. So I really view cider not as this is the only thing that you need to drink ever. Um, but I also think people's uh, habits are changing and Definitely. they don't just stick with one thing. I think people want something delicious. I think they want something interesting. I think they like to try new things. And so for me, cider offers certain flavor profiles that are desirable for beer drinkers, certain flavor profiles that are desirable for wine drinkers. It's a good seltzer alternative if you want something with a little bit more substance. Um, it's, it's not zero calorie and zero carb, but we like it that way. Right. Because we're speaking to people that are going out there and hiking or you know, want a good meal and something delicious. you know. And for us, taking these real fruit flavors and enhancing them with all types of Amoretti products or um, you know other things that are natural and from the earth. I think you, you get a really interesting, unique product that doesn't make you bloated. That's that important. <laughs> it's, it's, it's pretty important, you know, I think for, for everyone, you know, there's, if you climb to the top of a mountain, it's, you just sometimes don't wanna drink four IPAs afterwards. And carry that weight all the way back down. Exactly, and then yeah. uh, we, we make one cider that's rosé and it's blended with rosé wine and I call it hiking wine. Which is delicious, <laughs> by the way. It's delicious, that's my delicious. personal favorite. Um, but I, I call it hiking wine so you don't have to carry the bottle to the top and you're not too drunk to get back down afterwards. So, yeah. you know, it's it, our, most of our ciders are about 6% alcohol and it's a great beverage to enjoy in a wide variety of situations. Um, we highlight flights here in the tap room and almost every person that walks through the door orders a flight because we have so many amazing flavors. You They're like, choose. you can't choose. I, can't, I couldn't choose. <laughs> yeah. And so, you know, when people come in, we're like, here's our draft list, but we recommend a flight because then you can try everything we do. And you can start with, you know, the very straightforward, all bright, pear apple cider and that's it it's dry it's crisp it 
highlights the natural fruit flavors and it doesn't have anything else in it. Um, and then you can go to the s'mores or the pomegranate sage and sea salt and you can really like get funky with it. And you really still see the wide variety of uh, flavor profiles and um, pairing possibilities and all these things in cider that sometimes you don't have with other beverages. And not to mention, it's just so easy to drink. It's really easy to drink. It's really easy to drink. Yeah, we get the question a lot. People uh, people say, does this have alcohol in it? And we're like, yes. Yeah. <laughs> two, two drinks in, they're like, it does. It has alcohol. It has alcohol. It. It has alcohol. It. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, I mean, it tastes like juice. And I think that's, you know, it's, it's just delicious. It's refreshing. It it tastes healthy and natural and fun and light. light. And it's yeah. I, I think it's. A, I really do think it's a great product that's pretty underappreciated. It's not gotten a lot of attention here in America. Um, a lot of other countries have a long cider culture. Um, little known fact: cider was the American drink before prohibition. And um, like Johnny Appleseed was planting apple trees, but he was planting cider apple trees because everybody drank cider back in the day. Um, but after prohibition, they cut down all the apple trees mm -hmm. and America switched to beer because apple trees take a really long time to grow back. Yes. And so um, that kind of killed America's cider culture, honestly, and it's taken a long time to come back. And the places that do have a rich cider culture are places that grow apples, Virginia, Washington, the Pacific Northwest. Um, and France, it's the second most consumed alcoholic beverage after wine. Um, Sweden has a cider culture. Um, Spain has a cider culture. So there's just like a, a really rich culture around the world because it's a fruit that grows naturally from the earth. So right. people are like, oh, this thing is growing here. Let's make it into alcohol. Yeah, you know? definitely. And what, <laughs> what better way to do that, right? Because like you said, the way that our community, the direction that the community is headed is more of a natural, healthier path, right? But we're conditioned to all of these sugars because it's what we've always been introduced to. So having something, like you said, where you don't need that high sugar content, you still have this amazing flavor, you still have this base that is an all natural fruit base that you can go out really, and you could pick an apple from a tree, right? Like it's not, you don't have to call somebody up and say, hey, do you, you know, can you ship me some apple? Like you can just literally get it by walking down the street, yep. you know? And so that's amazing to just really take fruit to a class. Yeah, absolutely. And and that's another reason why I love Almoretti because um, cider has a bad reputation for being extra sweet because I think there's brands out there, some of the bigger brands that are like sugar water. Mm -hmm. And whether they're using less natural ingredients or maybe they're putting really high sugar content, I think because like you said, people are really conditioned to having high sugar things, but that's not what we want. And I think that's not what our consumers want. And so a lot of our education here in the tap room is letting people know cider isn't sweet. When we ferment our apples and pears, we go to completely dry, zero sugar. And then we add in flavors, juice, things that have sugar in them. Um, but that's why I love Amoretti because we can add some flavor back without adding so much sugar back. So it's still a nice and dry product. It's still a, you know, a low sugar product, but it has a lot of flavor. And gluten-free. <laughs> and gluten-free. And gluten -free. Yeah. Laura, can you tell us why you love Amoretti so much? I love Amoretti for its variety of flavors, for the natural flavor of the products, for the high quality ingredients, and for the customer service. Thank you. <laughs> uh, we, love exploring new, interesting, adventurous flavors. We love being able to give our customers a variety. We love being able to um, put interesting twists on traditional classics. And we, Amoretti offers such a wide variety and such high quality ingredients and such perfectly um, wonderful flavors that we are able to achieve the exact flavor components and taste profiles that we're looking for when we're creating new ciders. Uh, the ease of ordering, the great customer service, the personal attention, 
the the fact that we get an account representative and I can you know make a phone call and say I'm trying to achieve this and that you'll answer any question the the knowledge that you have about how to use the products and how to dose the products and what how to achieve the best results with the products and um, this is you're one of my favorite vendors I've ever I've ever worked with Thank you. Um, but I just I think that the the ordering process is seamless. I have never had a quality issue. I have never had a product that I'm unsatisfied with. Um, you are supportive of our business. You are supportive of our adventurous, you know, stuff we're trying. Um, and it's just, I feel like you're a partner in our, in our journey. And that's what we're designed to do, right? Like we're here to support you guys. We want you guys to succeed. We want you guys to expand the menu and try funky flavors and give you guys samples so that you guys can try that out and see if it works for you and if it does then you can turn around and purchase that flavor but we are designed to be here to help you i'm already is great in regards to supporting our accounts making ourselves available trying to make it as seamless as possible figuring out your guys's ordering patterns and like you said in a few months if i'm like i haven't heard from laura let me give her a call you know, hey, do you need anything? Are you guys okay? If you guys are set up and you guys are okay, job done, check, you know? But if there is something, you're like, oh, you know what, I'm looking for this, or I have this project coming up for summer, then we can get ahead of that curve, we can get those samples over to you guys, you guys have time for r and d If you guys are ever against the wire for something, you know, you can always give us a call. You know, if you guys have an, a business account like you do, you guys do get reps. So it's great because we get to build a rapport, right? Versus calling into a company that has a call center and you're just like, I don't know who I spoke to, or you're trying to find your notes of the person you last talked to, or what did I order last time? Or what was this flavor that I use? I see, I'm now looking back and there's like 10 peaches. What peach is it, you know? And you can just pick up the phone, give me a call, send me a quick message. And you know, all of our reps are designed and trained to do that, to be almost like a business partner, even though we're not here in the trenches with you. <laughs> yeah, I think um, Amoretti as a brand really takes flavor profiles to the next level. And I know that if I choose an Amoretti product to put into my cider, that it is going to achieve the result that I'm looking for to get that flavor that I'm trying to convey to my customer. Um, and it, it's really a complement to the entire process that we do here. And I know that when I call Amoretti, I'm going to get the highest level of customer service. And that's what we pride ourselves on, along with great flavors, right? And consistency is also being able, along with the great product, you have to have great customer service. So, yeah, and I, it. it's a pleasure working with you. <laughs> Sam, Thanks. we love each other. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> you, again, you start with a delicious product and you have a wide variety of products. So if I come up with like the craziest recipes I can probably ever think of, and you're like, yep, we've got it. I got something for you. <laughs> really, every yeah. time. And I'm like, that's amazing. Um, and for me, the like, what clinched it was we hadn't spoken in like, uh, I don't know, a few weeks or a month or something. And you said, hey, it's the new year. Need any samples? And I was like, well, yeah, <laughs> that's fun. Yeah. Um, you know, we've got we've got a tap room. So out for distribution, um, Bivouac is distributed in all of Southern California and Arizona. And out for distribution, we have four core styles and we produce those all the time. So those recipes are, um, you know, consistent and we use Amoretti in some of them. Um, and those recipes are consistent, so that order is consistent. But here at the tap room, we have 24 taps. We're rotating all the time. We have customers that sometimes come like three times a week. And some of them want the same thing every time, but some people want new stuff every time they come in. And Amoretti offers us the opportunity to try out research and development flavors, um, small batch with either low buy-in or you send us samples and we're like, okay, let's give it a shot. Isn't customer feedback just so important? Customer feedback is so important. And you know, for us especially, like again, that is what this tap room is for. It's to bring the community together. It's to enjoy amazing food and drink. And it's for us as a, as a company to learn what consumers like. 
And um, having that feedback is just incredible. A few months ago, we came out with a cider called the Scenic Route. Um, and it's a in our road trip series, we're doing a series of ciders that are inspired by a road trip up the Pacific Coast Highway. How fun! And um, the first one was in uh, San Diego and we paired with a local organic farm and we used local organic citrus in the cider. Um, and then the second one we did, a, it was inspired by a camping trip to Big Sur. And so we really wanted that quality of um, camping in, near the ocean. And um, so we did some research about like what grows around there and what, um, what would give everybody that feeling. If you close your eyes, you wanna drink this cider and feel like you're sitting by a campfire yeah. in Big Sur. And um, we came up with pomegranate, sage, and sea salt. And we used our apple base, we used pomegranate juice, um, and we used actual sea salt, but then we needed sage. And so I called you and said, do you have sage? And you said, yep, I'll send you a sample. <laughs> um, and we got it and it was so amazing. I mean, you know, you smell it and you're like, oh, wow. And this is sage. <laughs> it was sage. And um, anytime we get a sample, we will like pour one of our normal ciders and then put one drop in it, mm -hmm. like just to see. Well, I drop. <laughs> literally yeah. one drop to say like how strong is. Sometimes we touch it to our tongue. Don't do that. Nope. <laughs> it's really strong. It's very strong. Yeah, it's really yeah, strong. I always tell people, I'm like, I wouldn't suggest trying it straight. Like it's extremely concentrated. Yeah. You know, the usage level is like half an ounce to two ounces per 31 gallon. Yeah. So it's like, you just put a little dab on your tongue. You're going to taste for sure. it yeah. like, like for the rest of the week. <laughs> right. Exactly. Um, that's, yeah, right. I'm like, I taste sage in every meal for the rest of my life. <laughs> but um, yeah, so we put like one drop in just like a normal glass of cider and we try it and we're like, oh damn, this is, this is exactly what we were looking for. Um, so all it took was two ounces, like one of those tiny little bottles for a 500 gallon batch. That's awesome. It was awesome. And it really, like it became one of our most popular selling ciders ever here in the tap room, the feedback was insane. People were like, oh my gosh, you have to have this all the time. And it was a limited release. Yeah. And it just gave you that exact, like close your eyes, feel like you're camping, smell the fir trees and the ocean salt, you know? Yeah. And it was just like the perfect thing for that little two ounce jar, you know? And if we would have taken sage and boiled it and made it into, you know, made it into our own thing, it would have taken us definitely countless hours to achieve the exact flavor we were looking for. It would have taken us a lot of money and product to get there and um, and a lot of trial and error. And you guys have mastered it, you know? Oh, thank so, you. Yeah, it was really great. So I couldn't, I honestly couldn't be happier with our experience with Amoretti from, from beginning to end. That's what we love. <laughs> That's what we want to hear. So what do you say would be the next step or like what would be the next chapter for Bivouac Cider? That's an interesting question. <laughs> um, you know, we've been we've been open for four years, but the last two years, obviously with COVID shutdowns, have been pretty crazy. And yeah. um, we, we honestly didn't know what was gonna happen to the company. Um, and before COVID, we were sort of mostly draft. And then when everything was shut down, we focused a lot more on package and we really increased our package sales. Um, and we expanded into four new counties and all of Arizona. Um, and so that's really been like a game changer for our company and we're getting you know, a lot of new fans from all over the place. And it's been really, really exciting. Everything you see here today is everything we have. Um, and um, and eventually I think we're gonna grow out of this space. And so we're kind of looking for expansion opportunities. Um, in the market, we are always looking for um, what is the best flavor profile that we can put forward that's gonna get people to take that leap and dry, try a bivouac when like maybe they wouldn't have naturally tried a cider before. Right. People have asked before like who do you think your competition is? I, I don't think we have one. I don't, I'm not like a, I don't really kind of believe in that type of competition right. um, because I think that what we're making is something really unique and the consumer that we're speaking to is is really unique and knows what they like because of the quality ingredients that we're using, because of the care that we're taking, because of the craft um, 
nature of the product and like because of our customer service and because of the companies that we work with and because of the community we're cultivating um, and that sort of living that outdoor lifestyle authentically. I, I just don't think we have any competition out there. Um, so as we grow, I, I really wanna put forth the best flavors and the best ingredients and the best packaging to make somebody look and say, man, that looks good, I'm gonna try it. Try you know, yeah. I'm gonna try that, yeah. The one thing that I've learned while speaking with you and meeting with you over the last couple of days was that you allow your employees to be very involved in the flavors that you guys are gonna go forward with in regards to the design of the space. You guys really come across as like a family oriented cidery. And I know that when I got here, I felt that hospitality, you know, being welcomed in. Is that something that you guys also do your best to convey to your customers when they come through the doors as well? Absolutely. Um, I grew up in a family run business. And so that was something sort of natural to me. And I guess I just don't know any other way. There um, is no other way. There is no other way. <laughs> there is no other way. And you know, the, the, the people that have been here with me through the last few years, man, they've been in the trenches and yeah. they've really been on this adventure with us. And so Bivouac is the, the collective group of the people that work here, the people that come here, the people that have been on this journey with us. Um, you know, I, I think there's like a lot of fun, interesting participation that can be done with our staff or with um, uh, customers that come in here and enjoy our stuff. Like you guys coming here and coming up with our brand new cider, Yay. key lime and <laughs> coconut. We actually put it on our menu for next week and it's called Put the Lime in the Coconut. Oh, how cute. Yeah. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> um, you know, that's that's exactly how we come up with flavors. Somebody says like, ooh, you know what would be good? And then I call you and then say, do you have this flavor? And, um, and then we- It's always a yes. And it's always a yes. <laughs> always and, a yes. And then we try it out. And um, so that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna try it out. Um, so we've been soaking overnight. We took key limes, key lime juice and key lime zest. Uh, we took a little bit of cinnamon, fresh, you know, whole cinnamon. Uh, we took coconut. We've been soaking it overnight and making my tea that I talked about. And we're gonna we're gonna taste it and see where we get. And then we're gonna use some Amaretti extract and kick it up a notch. Yay! I'm very excited to try it. One question that I had for you, going back to being able to find you guys. You know, we went over the website, your guys' Instagram. Are the Marlins bike and the San Diego Jam? in distribution, mm -hmm. can customers find that or people that may be like, you know, that sounds so good. I really want to get my hands on that. Marlin Spike Pineapple Cider and San Diego Jam Mixed Berry Cider. Both of them are found all over Southern California, San Diego, Orange County, LA, some of Riverside County, um, and all over Arizona. And you can find uh, those flavors in Whole Foods and Total Wine and local grocers. I believe there's some online sites that sell us. We hope to obviously expand over time, but really what we're focused on now is concentrating in, in Southern California and Arizona, because one, I think that's where the action adventure lifestyle yes. people, um, you know, we, we're really speaking to that, that culture. Um, and two, we've only got these three tanks <laughs> and so so we can't possibly make enough for the whole country yet but maybe someday uh, in the near future <laughs> in, someday in the near future yes. yeah honestly if, if you go to our website bivouacsider.com and type in the where to find and put in your zip code that will tell you all the places that you can find us around you on our instagram we will update regularly when we're expanding to new territories yeah and that's amazing just to be able to take it one step at a time you know you have this end vision you know what you need you know where you know you know where to get the great flavors from you know and so being able it's just amazing and like i said you've done an amazing job your space is absolutely beautiful so again for anybody who is close that's able to come out and visit definitely stop by you will not be disappointed. You will leave with a delicious cider experience. So where, for those people that haven't ever heard of you guys before or are interested in trying your cider, but are not within driving distance, where can they go to find out more about Bivouac, find out more about your guys' company, and then usually find out where your guys' cidery is at closest to them? 
here in San Diego. We're right in the heart of North Park. Um, and so this is a great way to visit us if you're coming to visit San Diego. And we do get a lot of really um, fun tourists from other places who maybe are really into cider because I think a lot of other places have a pretty good cider culture. Um, and so people that are looking for cider come here. Um, cider is also naturally gluten free. And yeah. so um, it, it is offers a, a great beverage alternative for people that are looking for whether it's a healthy lifestyle or whether it's, um, you know, an intolerance to gluten. I think a lot of people come here um, or look to cider for a gluten free option. And so if you're visiting San Diego, come here to North Park. Um, if you are in Southern California or Arizona, our website is bivouaccider.com and our Instagram is at bivouaccider and uh, people rarely know how to spell it. So I'll go ahead and spell it B-I-V-O-U-A-C and then cider, C-I-D-E-R. And so bivouaccider.com and at bivouaccider is our Instagram. Well, Laura, it was a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day. Everybody, if you guys would like to learn more about Bivouac Cider, feel free to visit their website. You can also visit their Instagram page. And we're gonna learn more about cider. So. And we've tried cider. We're going to go learn about the brewing process and get some good information there too. But I just wanted to say thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule, all of your crazy po different positions and you know that you fulfill here. Yeah, thanks so much for being here and thanks so much for making a great product. My pleasure. Cheers. Cheers.